no longer standing and hence uh, there are various uh, formulas that are available and uh, the uh, things that is gaining importance is the equivalent k reading that can be calculated in the pentacam and here you know it is actually the 4.5 area and the ekr65 mean that is usually taken up as the k value so the formula error again it will under uh, the effective lens position would be wrongly calculated to be positioned more anteriorly in the uh, formula if you are not uh, keeping this in mind and there are a lot of other formulas that can be kept so the main thing here or the easy way out would be uh, to use the uh, ACRS calculator this is the website that you can go into enter uh, the values and uh, give your patient details and the formulas will just uh, be given and you can always go for the uh, average IOL power or the maximum so the question is about premium IOLs, can it be implanted? See, it always depends upon how it should be a well-centered ablation. There, there should not be an excessive higher order aberrations present and it should be in the uh, latest generation of uh, uh, refractive uh, machines that the patient has undergone. Then uh, yes, there are uh, thoughts about uh, placing a, uh, a extended EDOF lenses and even uh, 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 this Synergy platform lenses. So in conclusion, always make sure uh, the premium IOLs consideration has to be, at, uh, if you are started, it's always good to go about with the uh, single, mono, uh, single vision distant lenses. And the next question would be about fixed endothelial dystrophy. And here the question is whether I should be planning phaco emulsification alone or should, can I, should I be combining it with an endothelial keratoplasty? Well, uh, to consider that, it would be always better if you have subomital endothelium with cataract co-emulsification can be considered and then plan a second stage uh, endothelial keratoplasty. The next thing would be if, when do I go about with a triple procedure I can plan DSEC with FACO or I can plan PKP with ACC, uh, ECCE. Now what are the three things to be considered here is the PACI uh, has to be uh, according to the relationship with the thickness of 650 microns. I'll tell you when and, uh, and the, how the good the view is for the surgeon and how is the endothelial count is it above 1000 or not so in fuchs endothelial dystrophy if you are uh, looking at a uh, thickness that is less than 650 with a good endothelial count you can go about with phaco alone but the counseling has to be done well that you may the patient may need a endothelial keratoplasty at a later stage now if it is 650 micro, less than 650 with a cell count of less than 800 then you have to be in the, the second level of counseling for the patient that he may def, he may need it uh, very soon and if you are already dealing with a thick cornea that is more than 650 microns and the cell count of that is less than 800 then it's always ideal to go about with both together so this is again just as we did in a pkp we have to take care about the uh, endothelial count and the other conditions where you may have trouble is you have central corneal opacity with cataract uh, you uh, can plan a triple procedure if you are looking at a dry eye always treat the dry eye first otherwise you will end up with patients who will keep uh, eating your head and if you have a service problem like a pterygium you I always do the pterygium first wait at least for six weeks and then plan my biometry herpetic keratitis you will have to uh, cover the patient on uh, herpet, uh, antiviral drugs wait for at least uh, two to three weeks and then uh, uh, monitor the patient even post-operatively Bell's palsy, exposure keratopathy is one thing you have to keep in mind and ensure you, uh, you may have to do a tarsography if the eyelids are not closing fast. And in immune keratitis, it all, it's always ideal to do the cataract surgery under steroid cover. With that, I thank you all for your patient listen. Uh, thank you, Dr. Shaji. Uh, as we are running out of time and Dr. Shaji has a session next, I think we can take the questions later. So... May I invite the final speaker of our IC, Dr. Ambika Shetty. She is a cataract and refractive surgeon. The ophthalmology department at Gitanjali and ENU Hospital is a brainchild. So, a warm good morning to all of you. Um, the previous uh, speakers have covered uh, most of the important topics. So, with the uh, variety of options uh, for multifocal uh, lenses,
we need to have a good idea about uh, the current technology so that we can uh, help the patient take the right decision. So my talk would cover decision making, analysis of factors and the challenges faced by the surgeon. So this is a patient, Mr. Babu. So Bob, Mr. Uh, B, he spends most of his time outdoors and he's never worn spectacles before. Uh, apart from uh, his cycling, gardening and uh, doing other manual activities, he also spends very limited time uh, reading newspaper. So we also know that uh, in the traditional classification, there is refractive and diffractive. And also now we have other options such as extended depth of focus, trifocal, enhanced monofocal amongst various others. So the, uh, coming to the refractive design, there is an annular zone of uh, near addition. But the disadvantage is that it is pupil dependent. In the diffractive design, there are multiple concentric rings. The advantage is both distance and near visual acuity is gained, but then there is a loss, loss of contrast. With the extended depth of focus, there is an added advantage of getting uh, better intermediate vision. Also, we have other technologies such as quadrifocal, enlightened technology, acromatization, wavefront shaping technology to enhance the patient experience and also minimize the uh, dysphotopsia, glare and halos that were present, uh, that were, uh, uh, present in the traditional uh, multifocal lenses. So when we speak about enhanced monofocal, so the aspherity, aspherity in the anterior corneal surface, anterior surface of the lens, uh, gives a patient a little bit of a intermediate addition as well. So without uh, uh, patient experiencing glare and halos, he can uh, expect a spectacle independence in 72% of patients and uh, intermediate vision in uh, spectacle independence of uh, in intermediate vision in 72% and 38% for near vision. Coming to the factors that influence in decision making, it is important to understand the patient preferences, whether the patient is, uh, likes night driving, what is the kind of patient personality, what is the ocular health and also uh, make the decision based on the surgeon's experience. It's important to explain the benefits and limitations, set realistic expe expectations explain the patient regarding halos and glare and also explain that in certain situations patient may still need glasses. Beware of uh, difficult patient personalities, patients who are highly critical, have high visual demands, who are also extremely meticulous in describing their uh, visual impairment. And when we come to the ocular health assessment, it's important to understand whether the patient has a dry eye, also rule out any meibomian gland dysfunction. Understand by feeding the data in the Barrett's toric IOL calculator whether the patient needs a toric IOL and avoid extremely high refractive errors and also identify subtle anterior segment pathologies, any high, uh, hidden corneal dystrophies and also it's important to understand what is the scotopic pupil size. And one more important thing is any hidden uh, uh, pathology in the capsule or zonules like uh, subtle pseudo exfoliation must also be picked up. In certain situations, it may be necessary to do specific tests such as specular microscopy to understand whether the patient has any gutte and a corneal topography to identify whether the patient has any subtle keratoconus or increased uh, spherical ab increase in the ab uh, aberrations. Also, in certain situations, it may be necessary to understand whether the patient has a high angle alpha. And also, in certain situations, it may be necessary to do an OCT to pick up any subtle macular pathology. Based on the surgeon's experience, one can discuss with their colleagues and also understand 
and get a better idea about which IOL would be suitable for a particular patient. It's important to anticipate and manage potential complications. And also, it is important to be updated with the latest technology so that we can take the right decision. Most important is uh, an accurate biometry and use of third generation formulae, target low hyperopia, target for a well centered capsulorexis, aim for a careful cortical cleanup, and in the bag placement of IOL. In the post operative period, the patient has to be counseled that regular post-operative visits are needed because sometimes neuroadaptation may take